Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and my 14-year-old, I had to help him do a little bit of shaving for the first time in his life today. Um, these kids, when they're, when they're that age, they don't want to confront the idea that it might be that time, and you might have to groom yourself a little bit, but this kid reluctantly let me, um, uh, I guess he's grown up fast now. 14 years old. <laughs> I mean, golly, time flies, doesn't it? Well, guess what? Our market has been flying the last 48 hours or so. The market is now at over 394 billion and it looks like XRP is up over 5%. We've got Bitcoin is dying to, I think it crossed 13K yesterday and it's wanting to cross back over it again today. Let's see what Stellar, Stellar's up 4%. Um, let's see who's, let's see who's up the most in the last 24 hours. I haven't even checked this in a while. Something called reserve rights, something called avalanche. Um, let's see the first one that I know looks like Litecoin in terms of the top 10 is, is, is up the most in the last 24 hours at 11.82% chain links up 10. What else do we have? There's quant up 9.6. Somebody was asking me to look into quant by the way. I may look into it further. I haven't, I have never even looked at quant, but I'm really not, you know, look, I want to see this XRP thing through and I know we're going to. And so <laughs> I've kind of not wanted to get distracted. There's always so much to talk about, by the way. Nexo Finance put this out. We are thrilled to inform the XRP community that Nexo will support the smart, the spark flare network airdrop. We will announce more details at the beginning of December. So there's another one. Now, this is from Coindesk. Um, I'm getting a text from someone. Hold on one second. Um, I've no I've been getting all kinds of texts about like election texts out of nowhere. Don't know what that's about. Okay, Coindesk investment firm Franklin Templeton and VC firm Illuminate have joined an extended Series A round for crypto security firm Curve. The reason I know Curve is um, for two reasons. Walid, but I think it's Walid Banothman. I think that's how you say his name. He was a guy I met at uh, Ripple's Swell in Singapore in 2019. A very smooth salesman. <laughs> he went and he, he now works at Curve. I also know that Curve is the institutional custody platform that does the custody for iTrust Capital, which is where I have my Roth IRA and have a bunch of XRP myself. Okay. Um, and so that's Curve. And this is interesting. It's also interesting. Franklin Templeton um, is also, some, many of you may, may not remember, Franklin Templeton, this is from uh, September 2019. Franklin Templeton Investments, a global investment fund with nearly $700 billion in assets under management, has filed a preliminary prospectus with the SEC for a government money market fund whose shares are tokenized on the Stellar Network. All right, so there's that. And then today, IBM and Inside R3, or R3, join forces to expand blockchain capabilities and services across hybrid cloud. Not going to go any further into that, but I just, uh, there have, I believe, um, they're having Corda Con right now, that which is um, R3's conference every year. Um, also, I wanted to send you all to go um, tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, XRP Darren is is doing a video called The Invisible Hand. And this guy does really good videos. He's doing this as a premiere, I guess. But you ought to go subscribe to him. Also, follow him on Twitter. He really puts together some good videos. So go watch his video and give him a subscribe because you're wanting to, you're going to want to be notified in the future of his videos as well. This guy does videos on XRP and does them well. All right. Um, this is uh, back to that PayPal news from yesterday. 
Um, this guy's Hunter Horsley. I'm going to give him a follow. I don't know if people realize just how big of an institution PayPal is. It's bigger by market cap and users than Bank of America, Wells Fargo, City, Goldman, Morgan Stanley, Amex, BlackRock. Forget the banks. Crypto just leapfrogged and got a massive FI as a stakeholder. I 1,000% agree with what this guy's saying. Um, it's not about the technicalities of how they're getting into blockchain and all that. It's about the fact that you got the headline. And all these other companies, they don't know all the intricacies. They're not paying attention to all that right now. What they're seeing is a massive company called PayPal with over 300 million customers getting that are, that are putting the stamp of validation on crypto. That's what's important here. And that is what is going to drive more and more companies in, whether it's companies that are adding Bitcoin to their treasury or just um, companies. And it's also going to get regulators to start taking this more serious. When they start seeing companies like PayPal come into the fray, they know that they've got to get off of their pins and start signing uh, legislation that's going to really help this industry. All right. Michelle Vandenberg sent me this. Uh, this is more, this is from the cryptic poet. This is Brad Garlinghouse on Bloomberg. And it's more of the, we're regulations, you know, are not happening. So we're, we're, we might move our offices to Japan, which I don't understand because they already have SBI Japan. Ripple is already all over the world in five or six or seven locations. Don't really know why they would need to move their office, but I'll go along with this. I'm getting from what you're saying that very much options to move to a different jurisdiction would be on the table. Are you serious about making Japan the new home for Ripple? You know, Japan has been one of our strongest markets. We have a very su successful partnership there with a group called SBI. They're actually our largest outside investor. And the, the CEO there, Katao San, has been an, an innovator and pioneered a whole lot of things around finance and technology or fintech. So certainly Japan is one of the markets we're looking at because there is clarity and i think really japan an innovator and in a very su successful partnership are you serious about that's the video it's not the me. government a couple of hiccups on this i'm video. getting from what you're saying that very much options to move to a different jurisdiction would be on the table are you serious about making japan the new home for ripple you know, Japan has been one of our strongest markets. We have a very su successful partnership there with a group called SBI. They're actually our largest outside investor. And the, the CEO there, Katao San, has been an, an innovator and pioneered a whole lot of things around finance and technology or fintech. So certainly Japan is one of the markets we're looking at because there is clarity. And I think really Japan was on the leading edge back in 2017, providing a taxonomy to help companies and to help all of the regulators understand how they were going to look at different cryptocurrencies. So you've started talking to, say, the financial services agency in Japan? Well, I'm not prepared to, to talk publicly about the different conversations we're having around the world yet. But suffice it to say, I think Japan is one of the countries where we think there is clarity and there has been specificity. And that clarity allows us to engage. And, you know, our goal from the start has not been to circumvent any regulation. But we, we can't have it as a guessing game and knowing how the regulation is going to play out. And that's kind of what we're seeing here in the United States. You know, it's interesting. I read an article about Chris Larson a few months back where he's installing security cameras all over San Francisco um, because of the crime that they have out in San Francisco. And I read that he was installing all these cameras all around um, San Francisco. I wonder if he plans to move to Japan as well, right after he's got all these cameras installed. For <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, folks. Um, <laughs> I'm not buying all this, but I'll, I, look, I, I, that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm not going along. I'm not uh, going to uh, comment a whole lot on that. But I am going to show you what XRP Crypto Wolf said. Ripple Labs has shortlisted Japan and Singapore as countries that Ripple could move to if it leaves the U.S. due to lack of regulatory clarity. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said Switzerland, the U.K., and the United Arab Emirates are also potential destinations. So you're telling me that Brad Garlinghouse is going to move his family to Switzerland, the U.K., United Arab Emirates, or Japan or Singapore? Okay, when I see it, I will believe it, okay? All right, XRP Crypto will crack and launch spot trading. XRP, Bit, uh, 
BTC, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash for Japanese residents. Both crypto to crypto and Japanese yen denominated pairings are available. Kraken relaunches crypto trading in Japan as a part of its APAC expansion. And then we have this XRP crypto. Well, Forte is building. Forte, remember, is an investment by what was Spring and what do they call it now? Is it was that Ripple X or was it? I can't remember what they changed the name to. Forte is a building blockchain game economic zone that utilizes XRP. It aims to make the exchange of value between game creators and users. With the spread of IoT and robotics, XRP may be used for payments between goods or between goods and people. And then we have this. PTS sent me this. Um, this is, I believe this is that, um, that promotion where SBI Virtual currencies is giving like 40 or so XRP to everyone that opens an account, but I don't know Japanese. I was just going to show you this little commercial they had. Okay, so anyway, it was just a little VC, SBI VC commercial. Hey, Oseko Carmona sent me this. Um, if it's not Bitcoin, it's a shit coin. And then th this person was retweeting, um, Vitalik Buterin. And I, I guess, um, Vitalik Buterin got offended because I can't tell. I'm assume I'm assuming he's asking, including XRP. And for those of you that don't remember, Vitalik Buterin slept on the couch of Stefan Thomas, who was at the time the CTO of Ripple. He slept on his couch and, and this is, he wanted to work for Ripple, as I recall. Then he left that couch and created Ethereum. So, um, this guy right here, I've always thought that what he did is he jumped the gun on a smart contract platform. And it's, it's almost like that's what Ripple wanted him to do. <laughs> that's what I've always thought. It's almost like they wanted him to go out and build this Ethereum smart con contract platform while they had XRP in the XRP ledger and created Codius. I don't know. Who knows? All right. Um, and then Esoteric XRP had an interesting tweet. Exactly. Ripple board members Ken Kirsten and Craig Phillips both tied to the White House. Ken Kirsten through Jared Kushner. Craig, Phillip, Craig Phillips worked for Steven Mnuchin and led development for regulatory reform of financial system executive order 13772. Anna Manuel, deep state. Now, if you look at Anna Manuel, she is like a... Um, She's on uh, the, I can't remember, I always forget. She, I think she's a board member, but either the board or an advisor. But anyway, Ann Emanuel is, is with the firm that Condoleezza Rice, who was in the George W. Bush administration was. And Ann Emanuel is, the, when you say the word deep state beside her name, that, I mean, if you, if you start looking around, <laughs> it's kind of an, a lot of interesting things uh when you go down that road but anyway he's he's retweeting this which is um this guy who's saying xrp thread is the hype still real i haven't played the x the crypto market in a long time but i did have a lot of success with xrp early on why do you think xrp is going to win again and when do you th think it's going to take off this is your chance xrp people i see your comments all the time so make your best case for anyone uh for why anyone should invest and then this person says the Ken Kirsten and Craig Phillips connection is what erased any doubt for me. Oh, man, I mean, there are so many things that erased any doubt for me. And that's why I have hashtag zero doubt. Tim Fargo, failure cannot cope with persistence. Napoleon Hill, that is exactly right. Failure is just a part of doing business, folks. Um, and then the Digital Currency Group, we're excited to share our State of the Crypto Industry Report. Big thanks to the 150 plus portfolio company executive executives who participate in our biannual surveys and let us share our insights with the world beyond. Now, I wanted to show you all this. Every once in a while, I like to show you these unstoppable domains that have either been sold or that people have for sale. This guy has this for sale um, for 3,888 Ethereum. It's Bitcoin UK dot crypto. All right. These are, and for those of you that don't understand, this is, this is like, it's like, a, a an email address for getting paid. You can set these dot crypto addresses. You can input your Bitcoin address. 
your XRP address, your Litecoin address. You can input all these addresses and then somebody can pay you to this one thing, BitcoinUK.crypto. Well, look what this guy did. He bought this on the secondary market. And this is cool. You can go and look at these things. So he bought it for 14 Ethereum from digital property. And then you see the transfer take place from digital property to Shalom. All right. So now, and then Shalom puts it back on the market for 3,888 Ethereum and it's Bitcoin UK dot crypto. So, um, unstoppable domains go in the description of all the videos I do and you can click on the link and go and buy. If you have any other, if your own ideas for what would be a killer name, you can buy an unstoppable domain that, or you can go and buy They have a setup in there where you can go and see what's on the secondary market, or you can buy one that you came up with a name that you found available. Then you can put it for sale yourself. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that I have about six or eight unstoppable domains. What I did is I bought, um, I bought several of them that were like, um, which ones did I get? Like LSU football dot crypto. I got that one. Oklahoma football dot crypto. I think that was one of the ones I got. Um, Auburn football dot crypto. I, I, those football names are, are a pretty, I think that's a pretty good niche, but anyway, really cool opportunity. I got about six or eight of them myself. Thanks for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, and embarrassed by their friends, family, and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors, the information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free digital asset investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.